Here we go then with uh, the third leg of the Barks Bonanza. Peter Lloyd coming across, David Perry already there, Richard Musson, the winner of last year's European Grass Tuck Championship in Ainram and a splendid ride he gave us that day. Sarah Giddings coming to the line and also Stefan van der Helm. Well, let's hope he's enjoying his grass track in uh, Britain. Andy Sally's made the best of the start. And uh, a challenge there uh, as they come into the top bend, but uh, still Andy Sell with the advantage as they come round towards us. And uh, Peter Lloyd must be hoping his luck's going to change. And uh, Larry Doncaster in second place, Richard Mustard in third. So then, Larry Doncaster. It has been going so well here this afternoon. Almost unobtrusively quick. Unusual stylish Jeremy when he's in good form. Really going very quick indeed. And uh, he eases his way to the lead ahead of Andy Sal with Richard Mustard still in third. And in fourth place, he's in back of hell. So Jeremy Doncaster then. Beautiful feet out of action, clearly enjoying this new machine. Now Andy Sell in second, still Richard Mustard in third. Back a little way to Tyler Giddings and David Perry battling with Stephen Van der Helm. David Perry goes through, Stephen Van der Helm has another go, but uh, hangs on in there and snaps it. David Perry just moves a fraction ahead of him. Meanwhile then, to our left, heading for the checkered flag. Jeremy Doncaster it is. Jeremy Doncaster wins. Andy Sell in second place, Richard Mustard in third. Who's going to get four? Tom getting just ahead of David Perry and David Mandenau. Oh man, back a little way to number 24, Peter Lloyd, whose luck fairly, it fails to uh, lift and cheer him up a bit. He's still having a problem. First place, number 32, Jeremy Doncaster. In second place, number 50, Andy Sell. In third place, number 21, Richard Musson. 
In fourth place, number 179, Simon Giddings. In fifth place, number 419, David Perry. In sixth place, number 30, Stephen van der Helm. In seventh place, number 24, Peter Lloyd. And in eighth place, number 77, Rob Vincent. And the winner's time, of one minute, 39.6, one minute, 39.6, on average speed of 58.3 miles per hour. Steve Bishop comes to the line, Ian Humphreys alongside him. Mark Seabright clearing out his uh, favourite rut. Simon Wigg on the far side. And Steve Schofield on this side. Could be a cracker. We got some very quick man here going down the outside. A little bit of a problem inside to come across, but this is how the cross goes. Simon Wigg then from Kevin Banks at the moment and uh, we're going cross to the far side. Steve Schofield uh, dropping back. He looks like he's got problems. So, meanwhile, then time to admire Simon Wigg and how well he's going here this afternoon. So Banks in second, Steve Bishop behind him, then Mark Seabright, and then coming through Ian Hunter. Well, certainly disappointing that uh, Steve Schofield is here as a problem. So, Simon Wigdon. Control of this race now, Kevin Banks uh, in an equally safe second spot, the Bishop is way back from him, and Mark Seabright, and uh, it looks like um, it's uh, Vince Kinchin behind him. And the solid wing goes on his way, we can see that Steve Schofield sitting up, clearly not happy about something, and uh, having problems. Well, I'm busy this. Steve Schofield had such a good run in the British Championship the other night at Coventry and we'd have loved to have seen him ride as well here this afternoon but clearly he has problems. Victory then goes to Simon Wigg. To the ranks in a good second spot just ahead of Steve Bishop in third. In fourth place Mark Seabright. And then Steve Schofield. First place, number 25, Simon Wigg. In second place, number 22, Trevor Banks. In third place, number 34, Steve Bishop. In fourth place, number 167, Mark Seabright. In fifth place, number 29, Steve Schofield. And in sixth place, number 844, Vince Kinchin. And the winner's time, 1 minute 37.7, 1 minute 37.7, an average speed of 59.5 miles per hour. And that is in fact the fastest race time of the day. We stay with the solos, we stay with the Barks Bonanza. We're looking for Clayton Williams to join him with two wins already here this afternoon. Rob Camden, Gary Lobb, Will James, Glenn Cunningham, Colin Earl. We have Mark Chessel out there taking the place of David Wright. Will James coming back a little bit. Doesn't really want to come in line. It goes up. And then... Uh, going on, maybe it's a good start, but it looks like Clayton Williams is out front there already. Well, he really has been riding that first bend very well indeed. So Clayton Williams then on the Wasp with the Jawa motor really going well here this afternoon looking for another victory in uh, this race. Two already remember. Rob Fortune is behind him. Will James is third. Then up a little bit off Rob Fortune. Not enough. Gary Long back in fifth place. That's Glenn Cunningham then in fourth spot I think as we look across to the far side. Meanwhile out in front it's the former European Grass Track Champion, it's Clayton Williams. 
Charlie's heels is Ron Fortin, Will James and Glenn Cunningham backwing away with Gary Long just behind them. Just down the back straight with Clayton Williams urging that Jawa on. So Clayton Williams then with one more lap to go. Rob Fortune still in second place. Will James and Sir and Glenn Cunningham and Gary Long looking to move his way forward. So Rob moves into fourth place, Glenn Cunningham in fifth. Mark Chessel in trouble on the far side of the circuit as the leader comes round and heads for the checkered flag. Victory then for number 27, Clayton Williams. Rob Fortune in second place. Gary Lobb just gets, I'm sure, a sweet third as he eases his way past the uh, neighbour Will James. First place, number 27, Clayton Williams. In second place, number 23, Rob Fortune. In third place, number 31, Gary Lobb. In fourth place, number 46, Will James. In fifth place, number 98, Glenn Cunningham. In sixth place, number 28, Rob Camden. And in seventh place, number 172, Colin Earl. And the winner's time was 1 minute 41.8. 1 minute 41.8, an average speed of 57.1 miles per hour. So those numbers were 27, 23, 31, 46, 98, 28, and 172 and we cross the page. Listen, obviously I've been uh, having plenty of time here this afternoon to play around with the points as well. It really is all on this last ride that a lot of riders can make or not make that semi-final. Looking at the lineup in race 28, already um, looking at those results we've had before, Rob Wilson. He's had a win but he also had no result in his first ride so he needs to get a good result this time. He's on seven points overall it's the top 12 that go in those semi-finals. Steve Smith, well, he's indeed right up there at the top of the points. He just needs to almost get a comfortable result to make sure of going in that semi. He's had a first and a second. Craig Cheatham equally has had a third and a first. But the others, well, they've got to score well in this one to make sure of getting into that semi-final. Looking across that far side, we can see that Steve Smith is already on the line. John Halsey there as well. There's a lot of people looking around Rob Wilson's machine, but whether he is actually okay. But away we go, and as we look to that far side, it looks like John Halsey has made a very good start once again. We saw him do this earlier on. Around the outside he goes and into that first bend. Steve Smith has gone after him. Craig Cheatham is trying to get up into that third place. So as we look to see that first bend, Steve got away. Well, Steve Smith has gone after him in that second spot. Oh, it looks like John Halsey has got that third place in front of Craig Cheatham as they come around that bottom bend. A good scrap between those two. But Rob Wilson, knowing that he's got to do well in this one, he's missed that first result. He gets a good result in this one, he's into the semi-final, and then he certainly has a chance to get to that final. Come down past us for the second time. Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. John Halsey still right up there in third place, but Craig Cheatham just pushing all the way, trying to get through into that third spot. Craig has scored well so far this afternoon, so a good result in this one will make sure of a good place in that semi. But as we watch that top corner, are we going to see a challenge for this first place? Steve Smith so well this afternoon, looking to get closer and closer all the time. Into that pit bend they go, and they're still following Rob Wilson. Oh, really two different races to watch here at the moment. That first and second, is Steve Smith going to go for that first place on the last end? Or is he content with second place? If we're looking at that third spot, it looks as if John Halsey is now got himself sort of now has he as Craig Cheatham closes up again closes that third place he's certainly close to the line but Rob Wilson holds it from Steve Smith waiting for this third spot and it is John Halsey that he has holds on Craig Cheatham then sent with a fourth place John Hiscock finishing in fifth outfit number 24 Rob Wilson and Tony Miles in second place outfit number two Steve Smith and Keith Wall 
Third place goes to number 13, and of course is John Halsey and the passenger Daryl Dwyer. In fourth place, number one, that's Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. Fifth place, number 184, John Hiscock, Tony Bemister. And sixth place, number 80, Mike Keefe and Ken Hollyfield. The winning time was 1.39 exactly. That equates to a 58.7 miles per hour. So 1.39 the time. I'll oh, just clarify with our point scorers there. Of course, they do score points in the semi-final. So uh, valuable that you go through into that semi with as many points as you can possibly get. You then score points in the semi. And out of all 12 competitors, it's the top six that go into the A final and the remaining six that go into the B. Oh, looking across that far side, I can see that Ken Lane is a rider that's got an outfit stalled. Gets machinery going. It was handy, they got it going just before the mechanics got there. Edwards finally come into line, the rest of the crew is sitting there waiting for them. Oh, starter happy, he lets them go and away they go, I can see that Rosaling has made a good start on the inside, he goes down that back straight and gets to the front and already he's got quite a lead going into that first bend, Ken Lane moving through well as well, gets up into second place. He picked them off as he went through, Ken was certainly back in fifth place and gets the line. Gary Jackson though, back in third place at the moment, fighting with Phil Pittman and Gary Lane. But third place he sits, we know that he's put up some incredible times earlier on this afternoon. He's already had two wins from two rides, but at the moment he sits back in third place. Now what can he do with that power that he's got? We know that he's quick going up that back straight, but he's now got two very quick outfits in front of him. Russell and Paul Lewis, come back there was no way through for any other outfit they held a perfect line coming off that top bend they dive into this bottom bend this is where i think gary's going to make a challenge right the way around the outside of both of them perhaps he goes the long way round. he doesn't quite make it but that was so nearly rustling must know he's there now and he knows that gary jackson is quick coming off those outside lines indeed as he comes round, you can see that he's and goes past us, leading for Musseling in second. Ken Lane is holding third place. But as they go round that pit bend, we know that he's had two wins already, and now he is starting to go for his third. Up the back straight he goes, and indeed, again, you can see that Kevin Williams is hardly moving going up that back straight. He's relying purely on the power to keep him where he needs to stay. from Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Russell and Paul Urich must have wondered where he'd come from. They finish in second. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards finish in third. Phil Pittman and Gary Lane finishing in fourth with Lennon Ray Foreman in fifth. Third leg of the sidecar competition. And what a fantastic race that turned out to be for outfit number 23. He finishes in first place. It is, of course, Gary Jackson and passenger Kevin Williams. In second place, outfit number six. That is Rustling and Paul Urich. Three rides, three second places. In third place, outfit number seven, a good ride from Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Fourth place, number 90, Phil Pittman and Gary Lane. Fifth place, number 149, Lennon Ray Foreman. No sixth finisher, the winning time, 138.9. 58.8, that equates to 138.9 the time. Another win then, three rides, three wins for Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. We have, uh, if I can quickly give them to you, the runners in the two uh, solo semi-finals, the Barks Bonanza semi-finals in the first semi-final. We have number 25, Simon Wig, on 30 points. Remember the points are added from the semis, and then it's a sudden death final. Number 32, Jeremy Doncaster on 28. Number 34, Steve Bishop on 22. Number 22, Trevor Banks on 20. Number 98, Glenn Cunningham on 17. Number 31, Gary Lobb on 16. Number 30, Stephen van der Helm on 13. And number 419, David Perry on 11. That's the first of the two semi-finals. That's race 31. And the chairs are on the line. I'll give you the other semi when we get the opportunity. 
Oh, thanks, Tony. And two promising races they look to be. What a lineup for semi-finals in the Barks Bonanza solo competition. We're looking to find who it is that goes into the semi-finals of the sidecar competition. And this is the last of the qualifying rides. Roger Meter, of course, uh, I, the news I can give you about that stoppage in his second ride was it was a broken chain. So uh, no serious damage done to the outfit, we understand. He is indeed going again this time. So we know that he's got to get a good result. He starts well on that far side. Neville Penfold has had a brilliant start, though. He goes into the lead as they go into the first bend. Steve and Gary Wright have gone wide to try and get round the outside. Roger Meter is tucked up on the inside behind. Has got away. Roger Meester is up there in second, Steve Wright in third, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones holding fourth place at the moment. They've got a battle on their hands with Jerry Adams, but as you look to the far side, well, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall certainly leading, but Roger Meester saw a gap and he went for it. He tries to get through on the inside. You can see he's racing like mad in the middle of that bend, trying to hold that outfit up. He knows he's going to make it difficult for Neville Penfold. He's just getting that back in. And now Steve Wright going to get past Neville Penfold as well. Neville not happy with that though, comes back underneath him. Terrific sidecar racing in that bottom pit bend. As Neville Penfold and Paul Randall fight to maintain that second place. Steve and Gary Wright riding well in that third spot at the moment, desperately trying to get through in the second. Ida Matthews still not in contention with these front runners. As he goes into the last lap, he's working these same at the Neville Penfold and Paul Randall still hold second. Steve and Gary Wright in third. Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones still holding fourth, but really I think all the eyes are on that second spot. Will Neville Penfold and Paul Randall hang on to it as Steve Wright again closes going up that back straight? Well, Roger has certainly got away from them as he comes round off that top bend. He's going to win it, but he's going to be close for that second spot as the second round goes out. Roger, Peter and Ben Mappel cross the line. Neville Penfold hangs on. A good fight. Gary Wright. Jerry Adams in fifth. And Alan and John Blewett, this year is not going to be their Barks Bonanza by the look of it. A very disappointing ride from the crew that have won it so many times. To win for outfit number 51, he's got another seven points. It's number 51, Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham. In second place, outfit number 12, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. In third place, number 18, Steve and Gary Wright. Fourth place, number 15, and that's Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. Fifth place, number 55, that's Jerry Adams and uh, passenger Paul Baysby. And in sixth place, outfit number three, Alan and John Blewett. The winning time, 139.6 at 58.3, 139.6. 51, 12, 18, 15, 55 and 3. The last of the qualifying rides. We can now quickly add up the points, work out who it is. But Tony, that second semi-final. The runners yet, Jim, in race uh, 32. Number 27, Clayton Williams, who's on 30 points. Number 50, Andy Sell, on 22 points. Number 23, Rob Fortune, on 21 points. Number 29, Steve Schofield, on 18 points. Number 21, Richard Musson, on 17 points. Number 46, Will James, on 16 points. Number 179, Simon Gittings, on 12 points. Number 167, Mark Seabright, on 9 points. And the reserve is number 28, Rob Camden, on eight points. Here we go then, Jim, with the race 31. Well, can anybody get in front of Simon Wiggs? He's been going so well here this afternoon. And uh, superb riding. Cumber Banks goes with him. And uh, not quite his front at this point in time, but... Uh, Jeremy Doncaster had a slender advantage, but uh, and Jeremy Doncaster comes back inside again to take the uh, the lead as they go to that top end. So it's Jeremy Doncaster on the inside, Simon Wick on the outside, and I'm sure if they stay like this, there'll be some cheers from out here. So they're side by side, and Simon Wick in front. Yeah. Take a quick line into the bend, so it's Simon Wiggins in front. Jeremy Doncaster in at second place as he looks off to the far side. Trevor Banks back in fourth, but at the moment, it's like Steve Bishop in second, in third place, rather, just behind Jeremy Doncaster. So then, Simon Wigg it is, uh, out in front, leading from Jeremy Doncaster. Now, Harry, the way of Jeremy Doncaster, so 
Shadow Man in fourth. Steve Bishop in fifth as we look across the far side, then Gary Long, then David Perry. And uh, the leader is back with us again with one more lap to go. So it's Simon Wick on the Dower. Much to Jeremy Doncaster, then Jens Clear, then Jeremy Doncaster, then Steve Bishop, then David Perry. And back a little bit from Stephen Van der Helm. And Trevor Van der Helm battling away on the far side there. That's, uh, and Gary Lobb in trouble, cruising round. Third flag goes out, victory then for Simon Wick, Jeremy Doncaster second, and turning him in third, then Stephen Bishop, then Trevor Mack, then David Perry, and then number 30, Stephen Van der Helm. First place, number 25, Simon Wick. In second place, number 32, Jeremy Doncaster. In third place, number 98, Glenn Cunningham. In fourth place, number 34, Steve Bishop. In fifth place, number 22, Trevor Banks. In sixth place, number 419, David Perry. And in seventh place, number 30, number 30, Stephen Van der Hel. And the winning time, one minute, 39.2, 1 minute 39.2, an average speed of 58.6 miles per hour. There go then the runners for race 32, the second semi-final. Clayton Williams on this side. Richard Musson on his inside, then Will James, then Mark Seabright. discussion about which gate that various people are in and uh, Will James unhappy, most rest of them sort of sorted out. anticipate things. Not quite getting there. The gate goes up. It's a good start from Clayton Williams on the outside. And the going to get there again. It's Clayton Williams is riding that first bend so well. So Clayton Williams then out in front. Richard Buston in second place. Mark C. Bright behind him. Rob Fortune sitting in fifth place and Richard Musson challenges and Clayton Williams comes wide. Russ, Clayton Williams looks down at the engine. Williams in trouble after a tremendous afternoon's racing. Is he going to miss this final? Wow. Will he have enough points anyway? Mark Seabright in trouble on the far side there. So it's Richard Musson out in front then, leading the pack at the moment. And he's still in second place. And Clayton Williams in trouble. Well, he could well get through into the final anyway, but that may well be his number one by Richard Messon there, from Andy Sal, then Rob Fortune, then Will James, then Simon Hughes, and that's the order as they went past us. We were busy looking at it, looking at Clayton Williams, trying to find out what the problem was, but it's Richard Messon there, out in France, the reigning European champion, who had that tremendous day at Ingram and uh, took the title much to a lot of people's surprise because they simply hadn't heard of Richard Musson, but we had and we knew he was good. And he's still out front from Andy Shaw, from Rob Fortune, from Simon Giddings, from Wilkins. Well, yeah. Looks like Clayton's trying to fire up that machi reluctant machinery. Uh, Checker flag goes out this time around. Victory down for Richard Musson. And he's so much closer now in second place. Then Rob Fortune, then Simon Gillian. And then it looks like Rob Camden who came in as a reserve for Steve Schofield and who had a good position there. Two in first place, number 21, Richard Musson. In second place, number 50, Andy Sell. In third place, number 23, Rob Fortune. 
In fourth place, number 179, Simon Gittings. In fifth place, number 28, Rob Camden. In sixth place, number 46, Will James. No other finishes. Winner time, 1 minute 43.8. 1 minute 43.8. 56 miles per hour. The numbers then, 21, 50, 23, 179, 28. Well, let's look at the lineup because we know Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams have rode superbly well this afternoon. They are on maximum points, 21 points from three rides, three wins, and they come into this semi-final with quite a considerable margin over the rest of the riders in this semi-final. The closest to them actually in this semi is Russelling and Paul Urich. They're on 15 points, so that's some six points ahead. So Gary Jackson really has just got to get a comfortable result and uh, he will be through to that final. I'm sure he knows that. But Roger Mesa and Russelling will be looking to make sure of getting a good result. They want to get through to that final, obviously, as indeed do Neville Penfold and Ken Lane. They're the ones that know they've got the score well. And Phil Bittman and Gary Lane, they're on 10 points, so they're by no means out of it as yet. Remember, of course, we have got the other six crews going in the second semi-final. Now they'll be drawing for gate positions down there on the start line. I can see that uh, Russelling is on the inside. Can't say that I've noticed any advantage during the afternoon, whether the inside or the outside has been a better gate. There is always an old theory that if you're on the inside, you get to the racing surface a lot quicker, which can give you an advantage. And uh, as I'm sure a lot of you out there know, with uh, things like that going through drivers' minds, it can play a psychological part. So away we go then with the start of the first semi-final. Is that Phil Pittman has made a good start on the inside. Roger Mesa has gone with him. He in fact gets to the corner first. Russelling is tucked up behind him. They force the rest of the field to go wide. So as they come round that first bend, it is indeed As they come past us, Russelling has gone up in front of Ken Lane to get second. Ken Lane holding third. It looks as if there's problems to Neville Penfold at the back of the field but Phil Pittman doing well to get up into that fourth place. The front three getting away then as Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham will want to do well in this semi-final, make sure of a good place in the final. Russelling and Paul Urich, they've had second place today. That's where they sit. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards on three points. I should say on 11 points at the moment, sitting in third place. But I was anxiously watching then Gary Jackson as Ken Lane starts to push on the back of Russelling and there's problems. Ken Lane pulls out on the far side. It means that Gary Jackson now moves up into third place. Bill Pittman holding fourth and Neville Penfold and Paul Anderson still back in sixth place. They the last lap. Russelling and Shane Lapham look to have it all going their own way. Uh, Gary Jackson to be up there with them but maybe Gary knows he's got that comfortable cushion he knows he only has to score reasonably well in this semi-final he's through for that big final if he's not careful he's going to be caught by Phil Pittman as Phil Pittman moves up on the outside of him well, he would have seen that he's there now on the second and Paul Urich finishing second but Gary Jackson does indeed finish Bill Pittman and Gary Lane finishing in fourth. The 51, that of course is Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham. In second place, outfit number six, and that indeed is Russelling and Paul Urich. In third place, number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. In fourth place, number 19, Bill Pittman and Gary Lane. And fifth place, the only other finisher, number 12, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. The winning time was 1.39 exactly, that's an average speed of 58.7. 1.39 exactly, 58.7. So, that's the first semi-final, we've got to quickly add those points on to their grand totals. <laughs> we will wait and see what happens as John Halsey has indeed got the better of the start. Lena Ray Foreman has second place at the moment though. Remember this is just a case of whoever gets finishes first goes into that second semi-final. A slight change to the format of the program because obviously these two riders have come out for this runoff then what we have is the solo B final and then we will revert back to the sidecar semi-final in order to allow the winner of this uh, little head to head to get the breath back and then come out in that semi-final. Well, still it's John Halsey and Tony Miles, as I'm sure you can all see, that have got uh, just that little advantage over... Uh, well, I, I should keep 
changing the passenger release of mine. That's, uh, of course... <laughs> well, I know that uh, it used to be Tony Mars, but of course he's now with Rob Wilson. The program this is Dwyer. So, uh, Carol Dyer, that doesn't look like him to me, but there we are. We'll uh, sort that out as the day goes on. They've certainly got a distinct advantage over Lennon Ray Foreman now as they go down that back straight. And the chequered flag being made ready. As they come off that top corner, it's going to be a formality now to get to the line. And they will indeed take the place. And I'm sure you listen to my programme, and I'm sure a lot of you are as pleased as I am. We haven't got to scribble that out and put another name in. It's as I gave them to you, the last qualifying place for the semi-final in race 34 is number 13, John Halsey. So here we go then with the Box Bonanza solo B final. Two Cornishmen, Will James and Gary Lobb. Glenn Cunningham out there, who comes from Bristol, rides his speedway, of course, with Swindon. Simon Giddings from Worcester. And from Holland, back. Stephen van der Helm, and that's nice to see. David Perry there as well from Gloucester. Or Asherworth, actually, just outside of Gloucester. And Mark Seabright coming up to join the lineup. I don't quite understand this, charging into the start line to see if it will break, but uh, never mind. Uh, and if you're on this side, you can watch the clamp fly up, and away goes Will James, making a bid for a good line. Good line. Up the back straight, Will James in second place, Stephen van der Helm, I think, up into third, and that's good to see Gary Lobb in fourth. Stephen van der Helm eases his way through, goes for the second spot behind Glenn Cunningham. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it, if he ended up with a, a Paula Ryder, but Glenn Cunningham goes. Will James in second. Stephen van der Helm in third, but battling for second place. I know I'm down in Kent next week for the uh, oh, take it down there. You have to be careful what you say, don't you, Tony? Yeah, and also, of course, uh, we've got the Wimborne Motorcycle Club, the Bank Holiday Grass Track Weekend, and uh, the date, of course, is not what was on some of the posters. And the, the sidecar spectacular are now on the 29th, and it opens the centre on the 30th. Mark the B final again. Will James making a good start. Stephen Van der Helm there and coming around the outside the chain. Well, no Gary Lobb this time. Uh, he may have been excluded. I don't know. Or maybe he uh, was unable to take part. So Glenn Cunningham then goes on his way. Stephen Van der Helm for that second spot with Will James and uh, wouldn't it be good to see him have a good result here in the UK so then out in front Glenn Cunningham then the Flinders Speedway man really showing us how good he can be on the grass and uh, a talent clearly for the future here Stefan van der Helm in that second spot as they come round towards us once again and Mark Seabright in third Simon Giddings in fourth and behind him the stone flies up a little bit, Rob Camden. Oh, maybe it wasn't a stone, it was uh, a peg. Will James is uh, out on the far side. In fact, it was a flying peg, it wasn't a stone at all. So throwing pegs at us now. Meanwhile then, they come round towards us. Glenn Cunningham, one more lap to go. He leads. Devin Van Aal in second place. Mark Kubrick in third. Thomas Jennings in fourth. David Perry in fifth. Back a little way to number 28, Rob Camden. So then, are we going to see a Dutchman finishing second place in the Bach Commander B final? And in front, it's Glenn Cunningham. They're all bunching up on the final bend. Simon Gittings looking for a way round the outside. Is he going to get there? No, he doesn't. He's down on the ground. Looks like he's okay, but he overslid it. Glenn Cunningham wins. Devin Van Aal in second. Mark Seabright in third. 
David Perry in fourth. And in fifth place, Rob Camden. Really bad luck there for Simon Gidding. Challenging to go for a high place, go for second spot on the final band. First place, number 98, Glenn Cunningham. In second place, number 30, Stephen van der Helm. In third place, number 167, Mark Seabright. In fourth place, number 419, David Perry. In fifth place, number 28, Rob Camden. And in sixth place, number 179, Simon Giddings. And a winning time, 1 minute 46.3, 1 minute 46.3, an average speed of 54.7 miles per hour. And as we always know, we're here at uh, the Bronx Bonanza, coming rapidly towards the close, and indeed we've just got those big races to come. Who is it that's going to join Gary Jackson, Russell and Roger Misa in that final? That's my unofficial points, I'll say no more than that, but I've got those three on good points at the moment, looking like a place in the final, but... We've got to get the result from race 34, and that is indeed underway as they go down that back straight. Looking to see who it is that's made it to that first corner. Stephen Gary Wright have had a cracking start and got to the front as they go into that first corner. Well, Stephen Gary Wright on 11 points at the moment. They look to be going well at the moment. Rob Wilson is up there in second with Steve Smith right on the inside of him. Those two outfits together in second place. Nothing to split them from where I'm looking at the moment. Perhaps there is from where you're seating, but uh, on the far side I can now see that Steve Smith has moved through into second, or has he? Rob Wilson tries to go back round the outside again. Steve and Gary Wright, though, capitalising on that brilliant start. They are in front of the front of the Steve Smith and Steve Well, Rob Wilson and uh, Tony Miles still there in second place. Craig Cheatham is holding that fourth spot at the moment, but under pressure from... Ivor Matthews, it starts to get a little bit spread out. A good idea from Steve and Gary Wright though, they've uh, certainly capitalised on that uh, excellent start they had. As they go into the last half, second. Rob Wilson again tries to have a go at that second spot. Craig Cheatham is still there in fourth place, but he's under pressure once again from Ivor Matthews. Ivor Matthews looking to go around the outside, but as we watch the far side, Rob Wilson has got that second place now from Steve Smith. Well, Steve, the highest point scorer so far in this semi-final, so this third place should be enough for him, but we're waiting to see how it all works. Because the man who has done well is Tim Ryan, who gets across the line in first place. Well, Wilson gets second, Steve Smith in third, Craig Cheatham in fourth, and Ivor Matthews in fifth place. That's bit number 18, what a good win for Steve and Gary Wright. In second place, outfit number 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. In third place, outfit number 2, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. Fourth place goes to outfit number 1, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. Fifth place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. Sixth place finisher there, number 13, John Halsey. The winning time, 140.8. The speed, 57.7 miles per hour. 57.7 the average speed, 140.8 the time. Wow. I'm not quite sure how this was sorted, whether they had choice or whether they had to a position determined by their points they scored. Certainly Simon Wigg came out first and appeared to select his starting point. So uh, everybody stares at the, the side of the starting gate, not the tape, and they go together, Simon Wigg on the outside. Simon Wigg from Blake Williams as they go round the bottom band and everybody's cheering over here. I'm not quite going to say who they're cheering for, but uh, Simon Wigg out in front. Blake Williams in second place uh, and they come round the, the far band with Jeremy Doncaster sitting in third and they come round towards us for the first time at the end of the first completed lap. So it's Simon Wigg in front, Blake Williams in second, Doncaster in third, Richard Buckingham fourth and Andrew Shell. Next to these Baker, next Trevor Banks, the Marshers winner, right back in the Jaguar Riders. He's got a lot to do. Clayton Williams there, eyeing that back wheel of Simon Wigg. Can he get any nearer to him? Simon Wigg it is there now, out in front on the Jaguar. Really Fly along. Clayton Williams being urged on in second spot. In third place, then Jeremy Doncaster. In fourth place, a little bit of a problem there. So I don't know whether he caught a stone. He's going to be shaking his head as he came past us. But he's hanging on in there. He's still in that position. Trevor Banks gets through up to fifth place. Gets through up to fourth place. And it's Trevor Banks who sets his sights on Jeremy Doncaster, who's 
Some little way ahead of him, but he's going off, and he gets challenged again by Steve Bishop, and one more lap to go. Charles Wiggins from Craig Lewis in second, Jerry Doncaster in third, who's going to get fourth? Bruce Baker or Trevor Banks, they're both hard at it. Trevor's a wily campaigner, he'll have this all weighed up, let's see what he can do on the last lap, but meanwhile, it's Steve Bishop who's riding superbly. They head for the chuck and flag then, and it's going to be victory here for Simon Wigg. Simon Wigg wins, Clayton Williams in second place. Jeremy Doncaster in third, in fourth place Steve Bishop, in fifth place Trevor Banks, in sixth place Richard Mutton, in seventh place Andy Sell. And then we hang on a little while because back in eighth place, we have number 23, Rob Fortune, the final. In first place, number 25, Simon Wigg. In the second place, number 27, Clayton Williams. In third place, number 32, Jeremy Doncaster. In fourth place, number 34, Steve Bishop. In fifth place, number 22, Trevor Banks. In the sixth place, number 21, Richard Musson. In the seventh place, number 50, Andy Sell. And in eighth place, number 23, Rob Fortune. And the winner's time, one minute 38.4. One minute 38.4, an average speed of 59.1 miles per hour. Time of need it is Leonard Ray Foreman, they're waiting to join them on that start line. It does look as if we've only got five outfits, so that the rumour that I heard that Ken Lane had problems has actually uh, now been confirmed. We get underway with the Constellation final for the sidecars. Who's made the best of it from the start? That looks to me like Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds have got to the front. Phil Pittman goes after them in second place. Dropping into that first then. Niver Matthews and Peter Jones back in fourth place at the moment. Down past us for the first time. Phil Pittman trying to get the lead from uh, Craig Cheatham and indeed he succeeds going into that pit bend. Ivor Matthews now moving up into third place, going for that second as well. Craig Cheatham still there in second place at the moment though as Phil Pittman and Gary Lane who've missed out on the A final trying to make the best of this B final. Come round off that top corner leading what looks to be almost comfortably at the moment. They've opened up quite a gap between them and John Horsley in fourth place. Really a challenge, looks for that second spot. I thought Ivan Matthews was getting close then, but he seemed to slow coming out of that pit bend. It means that Craig Cheatham has now got away from him. Seems to be on the entrance of the bend that Ivan Matthews that closes up for a leading quite comfortably now in this speed finals I'm sure they will be pleased with that they had some good results towards the back end of last year and they'll be looking to go well this season this will be a good start for them at the beginning of the season up against a very very classy field this afternoon as they come round off that top end it is Bill Pepper and Gary Lane that take the second flag Craig Keaton and Clive Reynolds finish in second now they have to do the game in third John Halsey picks up fourth place in front of Lennon Ray Foreman. Outfit number 90, that is Phil Pittman and Gary Lane. In second place, outfit number one, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. Third place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. Fourth place, number 13, John Halsey. And fifth place, number 149, Lennon Ray Foreman. The winning time, 140.1, that's an average speed of 58.1, 140.1 time, you see that Gary Jackson has gone quite a long way over, so he perhaps feels that that is the better position. Roger Meter has come to the middle of the gate, Steve Smith looks to be lining up next to him. Well, Russell Ling, I must admit, I've seen starting much better from the inside, I feel sure that he'll go for an inside gate. He does indeed creep through right on the inside of Steve Smith. Oh, the last 
Star crew to come into line will be Steve and Gary Wright. And as those two actually come into line, we will be underway with the 1994 Barks Bonanza sidecar trophy final. Right, all six outfits now on the line. The starter boy is ready to go. The takes will go any moment now. You can see the Reds are starting to up. Still Steve Smith not happy with that starting position. He moves slightly, but the sidecar lets them go. And indeed, Steve Smith has been left on the line as we watch to see them go up that straight. It is indeed Roger Misa that's got to the front. Gary Jackson looking for that outside line. And Steve Wright following him as he goes into that corner. As they come past us, Roger Misa still at race speed. The rest of the outfit slowing down. You can see there has been a red flag put up by the class of the course in the interest of safety. And he seems to enjoy coming back around the outside of the competitors going into that first bend. Russelling, I know, had made a very good start from the inside. to come into line he indeed is between Roger Mesa and Gary Jackson on that far side we get underway Roger lifts the front wheel in the air he's lost momentum by doing that and Russelling goes through on the inside Russelling and Paul Urich it is that have got to that first corner Rob Wilson is right up there with them Roger Mesa is back in third at the moment it's Rob Wilson has been forced to go wide Rob Wilson goes fast in those, he goes down into that bottom bend and it's Rob Wilson and Tony Miles that get to the front. Roger Misa getting close to Russelling, trying to get through on the inside. Russelling trying to make sure there's no gap for him to get through. But Roger Misa goes through on the inside. A brilliant ride from Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. Already he's going after Rob Wilson and Rob Wilson has been forced again to go wide. Roger Misa looking for that. Russelling and to Roger Misa. Tremendous lap from Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. They go into that pit bend now leading. And where is Gary Jackson? We look back down the field. Gary Jackson is fighting with Steve Smith at the moment. And as we look down the lineup, it is Roger Misa and Shane Lapham that lead. Russelling and Paul Urich in second. Rob Wilson and Tony Miles in third. Steve Smith in fourth. And Gary Jackson. Roger Misa and Shane Lapham would love to win this event. And indeed, as they go round that pit bend, they've already got some five or six bike length lead on the Russelling and Paul Urich. In the third place, still Rob Wilson, but looks like Rob has hit problems as Steve Smith now goes past him. So Steve Smith gets up into third place. As they come into the last bend, uh, well, as you see the crowd here, and I'm going to try to regulate it. Russelling and Paul Urich get second, Steve Smith and Steve get third. Rob Wilson and Tony Miles take fourth place and Gary Jackson comes across the line in fifth. Well, I'm sure that uh, there's a lot in the crowd that are going to appreciate that one. He missed the start completely, he had the front wheel in the air, that doesn't help at all with the sidecar outfit. He lost momentum by doing it, indeed he had to fight his way through. Official result of the Barks Bonanza sidecar competition. Race 38 in your program, the big final at the end of the day. A win for outfit number 51. It's Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. In second place, outfit number six, Russelling and Paul Urich. In the third place, outfit number two, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. In fourth place, number 24. Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. In fifth place, number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. The winning time, 138.7. They're averaging 58.9. Uh, indeed, as the outfits come round to receive your congratulations, you can, of course, see them once again without crash helmets at the presentation. But one man I know will be very pleased to have his name on the Bath Bonanza trophy. It's eluded him for probably far too many years, in some people's opinions. He's got it this year, though. It's Roger Meester and Shane Lapham. Hey, 
Well, if Steve Smith and Keith Wall go past us, a tremendous fight from those two. And as they slowly go past you, a chance to see that uh, V-twin outfit of uh, Steve Smith. But a very, very happy wife of Roger Misa jumping up and down there, you can see. And Roger Misa saying, well, come on in, you see, that excited, you can join me as well. I think Shane's going to be the one who's struggling to find a position. <laughs> and that's it, they picked up the kids. <laughs> Well, a very happy Roger Meter, as you can see, disappearing back into the pits. We'll see him again at the presentation, but we've got one more race to complete. It's race 39 in your programme, the Euro Bonanza Invited Riders race. Tony. Thank you, Jim, after that uh, very, very exciting Bonanza sidecar final, and uh, Roger Meter doing what he always loves to do, winning in front of his home crowd. As, uh, always gives him a great deal of pleasure. So let's look then at the last race of the day. Race 39, number one, Jan Senegal. Number 15, David Steen. Number 13, Sean pa uh, Shane Parker. Number 25, Simon Wig. Number 27, Clayton Williams. Number 32, Jeremy Doncaster. Number 34, Steve Bishop. And number 22, Trevor Banks. <laughs> No. And I don't think you'll hear it over this. Just uh Well we had uh, one more set of birthday greetings. You may have heard us discussion discussing them, but uh, that may have to wait until at the end of this race. Well, the summer wig has gone through the event undefeated all afternoon. Can anybody do anything about that at all? Clayton Williams has challenged him hard, so has Jeremy Doncaster at times, and uh, remains to be seen how, uh, how it'll all turn out. But uh, the odds must be... Better away, Clayton Williams making another good start. Oh, Jeremy Doncaster, final oh, wig up the front. Clayton Williams is second, Trevor Banks in third as they go down the back straight. So it's Simon Wig on his way, is he, to yet another victory here this afternoon. He's going so well, and it's Clayton Williams who's being what he's been all afternoon, his major challenger. Trevor Banks in third, along to find him in stage two. And we have to say, what a tremendous performance we've seen from some of which here this afternoon. Maybe felt he had something to prove when he came, and he's certainly ridden superbly well. Ben Williams has a great afternoon. Trevor Banks plays very high standards, perhaps. Not had as much luck as he would have hoped for, but he's having a good run in third place at the moment. Steve Bishop in behind him, and then David Steen back there in fifth place. So then, one more lap to go. It's Simon Wig heading into that last lap. Wayne Williams, getting that second spot. Comes to the end now, he's going to make the third. That's Steve Fisher. Then David Stern. Back a little way to Jan Sinegal. And then, uh, number 13. Uh, number 13, of course, is Parker. So, coming around the final bend, heading for the checker flag once again. It's Simon Wick who wins. Clayton Williams in second place. In third place, Trevor Max. In fourth place, Jim Bishop. Followed by uh, David Steen, top of the line. Jan Sinigal, top of the line there. And number 13. Take it. Parker, rather, let's get it right. So, there we have it. The last race of the day. It remains only for the presentations and for you to show your appreciation of the successful competitors. In second place, number 27, Clayton Williams. In third place, number 22, Trevor Banks. In fourth place, number 34, Steve Bishop. In fifth place, number 15, David Steen. In sixth place, number one, Jan Senegal. And in seventh place, number 13, Shane Parker. The winner's time, one minute, 38.2, and the average speed, 59.2.
And then after he claimed this one, but he said it was a very, very close run competition, but it was eventually won by the guy that I've just mentioned a moment ago, in his first adult race yesterday. He won 3.5 rides, and he won the 250 competition yesterday. It is, of course, Roger
Township. And we'd like to go ahead and make that presentation. And uh, I'm looking for a Colonel. Good. Pleasure he's with us. We can call on that Colonel Cross to come across. In third place, then, from the Netherlands, Eric Dreyer. Very nice to talk to Thank you. 
And you see, that's important to pour with champagne, and the money's important to Russell. <laughs> well, I mean, I just had a word with Steve, he said it was done, it was demanding. Was it really good, Steve? You thought you had to beat him in the final? No, actually, I thought it was going to be Gary Jackson, so no. Um, mine seemed to be with second, uh, all three and two, all second in the heat, and second in the final, so that's where I should have finished today, you know? Well, the better result they were, I think you rose very, very well this afternoon, but Paul, I'm going to try and bring you in a bit quickly, because would you say this is the first meeting we've had this year of getting all the top side together? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Track point's a bit hard, but, you know, everyone's settled down for it. Like, this is the first year I've ever been on the roster with the first commander. So, I think, well played. Yeah, he did well for me, though, saying that I hadn't realised this was the first time you've been up on the roster from here, but maybe that is setting a precedent for this season. Second place there, Rickling and Polurich. And then we've got this wonderful crew to bring up here. They were, of course, the overall winners in the Cycar competition. It didn't look as if it was going to be there today, earlier on. We found out it wasn't going to change the they lost. They didn't get any points in their second ride. They came through and won their last qualifying ride. They won the semi-final. And you've got to say, in that final, they rode hard to win that as well. The winners are the last round of the Cycar competition of 1994, Roger Mita and Ben Thank you. 